All right, the cheapest surf towns in the world. Here are my top four. I always like to travel as cheap as I can to score the best waves possible. These are the ones that resonate with me the most. I'm gonna talk about these. And the fourth one is actually really under the radar. No one really talks about it, which is surprising because it's one of the best places in the world and it's cheap. So let's get to it. The first one, Siargo in the Philippines. Now, Philippines has a bunch of different spots. And the first one I'm going to talk about is the famous one. It's Cloud Nine. It's one of the best surf spots in the world. Um, the best months to hit the waves occur between September and March. Now, there is some other quieter spots that I like better because this gets really crowded at Cloud Nine because it's a famous spot. There's some great reef breaks that delivers perfect waves at Jacking Horse, Stimpy's, Cemetery is one of my favorites. And there's like so many all along this strip of General Luna. Now, the there is a quieter spot. I'm gonna talk about that in a second. As for like the type of wave you can expect at Cloud9, it offers a thick and hollow barreling left and right hander uh, ride. And um, the ones at Cemetery and Stimpy's are longer, more drawn out waves are great for uh, long boarding. Okay, as for the town itself, there is a slew of hostels and you can start anywhere from around $8 all the way up to $17 a night and they're all over General Luna. It is busy. Um, I wouldn't go as far as saying it's the tourist hell, but it's definitely action packed. There's a lot of people. You're going to meet a ton of people. It's a lot of fun. There's a lot of partying as well. But there is some um, quiet, more subtle hostels as well. So it depends what, there's so much to choose from. The food is really cheap. You're looking anywhere from maybe five to $7 a meal. And um, yeah, General Luna is definitely an experience. Now, a lot of people, including me, kind of got tired of the busyness and wanted something quieter with less crowds. So then I went up to more Northern East part of the island called Pacifico. It's exposed, it's an exposed reef break that has consistent surf. Autumn and winter are the best times of year to get clean waves, September, October. That's when I was there. And it's a small, there's a small little town in Pacifico. If you blink, you miss it. There's like maybe six or seven, eight restaurants. Uh, there's a little um, skate park that you can um, practice your skills at. And of course, there's um, great breaks all the way up. And of course, they keep going. They just keep going all the way up north. If you just keep going, the town leaves. And there's there's these tiny little specks of villages all the way up the northeastern coast. And it gets quieter and quieter and quieter as you get farther north. And then something really cool happens on the northwest of Siargao. Uh, there's um, in December... The waves actually get better on the northwest part of the island and it's a really beautiful spot and they have killer sunsets but in any other time of the year on the northwest side of the island the waves kind of die down it's mostly on the eastern side but except for december it kind of goes it gets big bigger swells in december-ish january oh and pacifico is cheaper than general luna like it gets really cheap you could literally live there for a month uh, for under a thousand dollars, no problem. Maybe you're probably including a board and a scooter and a hostel. Um, you're probably looking at like 200, 250 dollars a week around there. That's including meals. So it's a really cheap spot. It's really beautiful surfing, and the, the vibe is really nice, laid back. People are really easygoing. Next, Nicaragua. Now, one of the best places in the world to surf is Nicaragua. And this is a perfect, um, and more specifically, Popoyo. This is a big surf town. It has perfect setups. It has perfect A-frames, perfect beginner bays, so many surf spots to choose from. There's so many little surf towns peppered along the coast. It's one of the biggest, highest concentration of surf spots in walking distance. So you can really it's great for lazy surfing where you don't have to drive. There's lots to choose from. You can actually walk if you really wanted to. And if you do get a scooter for rent, they're probably around $200 a month. You could probably get a better deal if you get the whole month or a longer term. There's a ton of hostels right along the beach stretch and restaurants. Beers are $2. Restaurants are around 
five restaurant meals around five dollars now as for the um the actual um beaches to tell you about there's just so many that i can't there's too many for this video this is just an overview but i will do some if you're really into this video i'll do some more in-depth um videos just on specific locations nicaragua is one of my cheapest most best destinations for cheap surfing and um, you could live there long term if you wanted to okay morocco so since the 1960s morocco has been an essential destination for european surfers it's really cheap for european people for europeans to get there and it has warm water epic right hand points you can surf september through to march that's when you'll find the most consistent swell relatively warm water and warm temperatures it is a little sharky there is a little more sharkier surf destinations than other places but um you know that's just part of surfing so just to be aware of that um it's one of the most budget friendly destinations for people especially from europe it has wicked waves the hostels are around ten dollars a night now uh tagazoot and i know i just butchered that name i'm sorry but tagazoot in the south with its famed anchor point surf breaks is a well-known surf hub it's called anchor point Morocco is full of surf points all in the coastline around uh, Agadir area is packed with spots that come alive with swells. Now, I like Banana Point. It's mellow. It's a right hand point break and it's over sand. It's perfect for, um, it has like a long wall for, for long boards. And then you have Tamri, which is a friendly beach break for all levels. Uh, then you have Boilers, which is kind of a fast, long right hand and it's good for intermediate and advanced but there's so much to choose from again there's too many to name and you could you would probably need a car or a scooter to venture all of them uh, or a camel uh, depending on uh, what kind of deal you can score with the locals okay next this is my probably my favorite out of all of them and it's really surprising people think it's going to be expensive and it's actually not um, this is Okinawa in Japan and for North Americans in the US or Canada it's actually cheaper to fly to Japan than it is to go to the Philippines or Indonesia so this is a really great spot um, and Okinawa is great all year round it's warm water um, it's south of Japan there's some epic waves there's very there's swell virtually all year round other places have nice sandbar breaks for intermediates and learners um, lots to like here the the best in Japan just maybe uh, now for the island itself the island the largest island in Okinawa chain is Neha it's the place where to begin your wave hunting that's the home of the Sunabi seawall which is very one of the best it's often compared to Waikiki um, Okinawa it has a really long swell window like I said you can surf here anytime between August and March and even the low season, May to July, has some waves, even though they're more for beginners. Here are three breaks that you might be interested in. There's Hito Point, also known as Kochan. It's the north, northernmost part of Neha Island. And then you have Cliffs. I don't worry about the name. It's mostly called that because the spot was actually one of the last bastions of defense against the U.S. Marines in World War II loads of Japanese soldiers opted to throw themselves over the rocks instead of being captured so the story uh, in the water though is much better you're looking at multiple peaks spread along a well-protected beach then you have Sunabi seawall it's the most hollowed ground for surfing in Okinawa it's a great place to start and it's also very close to the airport and has something for all surfers now for the towns itself the hostels are surprisingly cheap you could stay there literally for an entire month for around three hundred dollars uh, Canadian, which is, I, I believe it was around three fifty Canadian for me, which was around only two fifty U.S. for the whole month. Like the the hostels were at that time were super cheap. Um, by the way, I'm gonna leave links to all the all these spots in the video below, so you can check them out. And um, if you enjoyed this video, let me know if you want more in depth. I can do each location more in depth. Uh, this is just like an overview of my four spots that really resonated with me and there's of course there's a ton more thanks for watching feel free to subscribe if you enjoyed this and be sure if you're into if you're really into philippines you might like 
my Philippines playlist here. If you're really into Bali, you might like, or Indonesia, you might like this playlist over here. I have talked about the cost of living there too. So that's it for now. And be sure to check out my free travel guide that's somewhere in the links below in this video as well. And thanks for watching and I'll talk to you later.